Welcome to uh, Unit uh, 5A, entitled How it Good is the Evidence, Does it Work? You're now just over halfway through the uh, module, and uh, what we're going to do today is to introduce you to the idea of critical appraisal. What, what exactly is critical appraisal? Well, critical appraisal is the process of weighing up uh, the published uh, research as presented in an article and uh, looking at um, three issues. First of all, is it valid? So is the research um, valid in the sense that has it been designed well? Has it been designed appropriately? Uh, so that um, we can have confidence that if there is a possible answer, have we selected the right way of um, trying to capture that answer? So very much that part of the critical appraisal process focuses on the methods section. The second thing that we look at is the reliability of the study. And this is where we look at the results. We look to see if there are possible extra explanations for the results that are given. How much confidence can we have the results in terms of basing our recommendations upon them? And the third area relates to applicability. How can we apply these results locally to the problem that we are experiencing or facing? And this uh, consi considers such um, uh, issues as, is the population that I'm um, interested in, uh, the, the um, target population, uh, does it match closely the um, population as presented in one or more studies, which we can call the study population? And if there is a good match, if we have little reason to believe that our population is substantively different, then it means that we can uh, apply the results um, with, with more confidence that we're not um, uh, doing this inappropriately. Now, why is critical appraisal so important? Well, we need a, a way of um, uh, judging the quality of published research. And there are several reasons for this. Um, so you may find several studies come to the same conclusion, but if those studies are all of poor quality, then just because they agree with each other doesn't mean to say that they've managed to capture the truth, if I could use that um, expression. So we need to use quality assessment, even in the case of agreement, to see whether the studies that have come to this shared conclusion do actually um, uh, share good study quality. And then secondly, we may find that studies disagree. And so we can use um, uh, the idea of quality assessment, if you like, as something of a referee to decide which of two sets of studies we're going to place more confidence in because they have been conducted in a rigorous and scientific way. And of course, if we only have a single study, then um, it, it, even though we don't have much evidence, it does mean that we can use quality assessment to decide how much um, strength we can place on that single study. How might we use critical appraisal? Well, um, three immediate applications come to mind. You may be able to think of more. First of all, that if you're presented with evidence in an existing systematic review, then it allows you to make a judgment as to the quality of the evidence base. So a systematic review team will have applied critical appraisal in order to tell you something about the quality of the studies. Secondly, if you're a producer of a review, then this is a mechanism by which you treat all studies in a common fashion. You don't privilege or, or, or um, uh, favour one particular study. You approach them in a consistent way, looking for the same features across all studies. And then finally, if there is no review, if, as in the subject of this um, um, module, um, we, uh, we find that uh, we're looking at individual studies, then this it provides a mechanism by which we can uh, uh, decide on the quality of that study. How do we do critical appraisal? Well, um, we start by uh, um, identifying uh, relevant studies from our literature search, which was the, the feature of the previous unit. We take a look at the um, study design. Um, is it a clear study design type? Does it conform to the major types of study design? For example, a randomized controlled trial, a cohort study, case control study, even a case study. 
Um, if that's the case, then we can use that group of checklists that are centered around particular study designs. And uh, in the unit, as you read them, you will see a whole list of these. And these are produced by such producers as the Center for Evidence-Based Medicine and um, the uh, Critical Appraisal Skills Program. The second possibility is that we don't necessarily have a clear study design and identified as a label, um, but we have a clear question type. So our particular question is a therapy question. It's a question about um, uh, guidelines. It's a question about uh, um, quality improvement. And so we would find one of those groups of checklists that are determined by their purpose rather than their study design. So you'll see from this that uh, we have quite a wide range of options. The first thing would be usually to be to latch on to the study design, but if the study design isn't well accommodated, then we might well focus on the question type and choose the checklist accordingly. Of course, if we um, are unable to uh, resolve the uh, selection of the checklist through either of those routes, then we might use a more generic uh, checklist that looks, for example, at how the, um, the study population has been recruited, so characteristics of the sample, uh, how the data has been collected, how the data has been analysed, a more generic way. But most of your studies will fall into the uh, existing uh, remit of these checklists. And, and there's a wide range presented for you in the module. So having the study in one hand, if you like, and the checklist in the other, in your other, then you would um, systematically read through the research article, answering the various questions, uh, typically with the yes, no, or unsure. And then at the end of this, you wouldn't do a scoring. We, do, we don't generally encourage scoring because some questions are more important than others. But what you would do is you would make an overall judgment is this a good study on balance? And uh, particularly, you might uh, uh, note and, and uh, rec record um, for future use any limitations or flaws that you've identified. And that is the product of the critical appraisal process. That is the appraisal. And uh, this may be uh, written up in the form of a, a digest uh, so that uh, the results of it can be shared with others. In the context of this module, then you'll be using your judgments about the quality of the study to um, determine your recommendations, how strong you feel the evidence is in pointing towards a recommended course of action. Now, I should say that uh, this particular unit is focusing on how good is the evidence, does it work? So that's the evidence of effectiveness. In our next unit, how good is the evidence, is it acceptable? We'll be going through a similar process um, using qualitative research. So thank you for your attention and please feel free to email me on a.booth at sheffield.ac.uk if you have any questions arising from this video.